Long haul tanker, straight razor shaving with long haul tanker, and uh, it is uh, approximately 18:55 Central Time. That would be 6:55 p.m. Central Time, and uh, date and time. Yeah, got those covered. I got uh, <laughs> I've got three days worth of whiskers on my face. I haven't had a shower or shave since leaving Great Falls, Montana. And here I am in Alma, Texas at the uh, Love's Truck Stop, uh, just south of Dallas uh, by about 40 miles. I'm going to adjust the camera a little bit downward. Let's see how that works. And uh, I'm about three and a half hours from the yard for tomorrow morning. I drove uh, about 560, 70 miles today, 640 miles yesterday. Uh, and let's see, that was from there to there, uh, from uh, Casper to uh, Belleville, Kansas. And then I drove from Great Falls, Montana to Casper, Wyoming, which is about uh, 550 to 570 miles. And so I've had three good days at a clip uh, since delivering uh, and leaving uh, Calgary on Wednesday. And uh, so everything has gone very well, no events, very nice, quiet day driving along and, you know, not letting traffic rile me up. So three days of whiskers, let's introduce the equipment. For the razor this evening, we're going to be using the Wacker Jungmeister 7 8 Spanish Point. Uh, I guess you can call that shoulderless. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I'm going to call it shoulderless. Uh, let's see what the back says here. Wacker Soligen Jungmeister. The face of the, the gold on there that you see, I don't know if you can... Yeah, I guess you can kind of read it. Original something something. Wacker, Soligen. Okay. Uh, beautiful honey colored uh, uh, bone, not bone, uh, horn. Horn scales. Set that aside. The uh, soap that we're using is the same we've been using all week. Uh, it's uh, Zingari Man's The Navigator. And I've had a lot of inquiries lately. Well, let's hold that thought. And then the brush, as we've been using, is the uh, 26 millimeter uh, QED Select Manturian Silver Tip Badger. Just in uh, faux horn, just a beautiful, and such delightful bristles. And for you beginning uh, 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 straight razor shavers and uh, 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 wet shaving uh, shavers uh, that want to use a brush, uh, those are very moderately priced, anywhere from $65 to $105, and for their quality, they cannot be exceeded. And I can say that with some justification, because I have some of the most expensive brushes made in the world. Uh, um, Plasson, number 20, High Mountain White, Genuine Horn. Yeah, go check the price out on that thing. Okay, let's get started. Let me lather it up. 
I don't have anything. That, well, I do have a couple of particular things to say, but they're not that important. Uh, generally, I've had uh, a couple of new subscribers that uh, I'd like to welcome. Uh, I'd like to welcome the gentleman, and I apologize, I, Butch, Butch, did I get that right? Uh, I'm, I'm going to guess that he's in the neighborhood of about 70 years old or so, plus or minus just a little bit. He said that 50 years ago, I think he said it was that his dad, his dad taught him how to shave uh, with a straight razor. Uh, he was a barber and uh, he complimented me, of course, on my videos. Uh, uh, and so I wanna welcome him and thank him for the kind comments that he said uh, yesterday. And then, um, the Cajun Blade, and I apologize, I don't remember if you stated your name, and so I'll just identify you as the Cajun Blade on YouTube. And I watched a couple of his videos, they're honing, primarily uh, honing videos. I didn't see any shaving videos. Um, uh, but he looks like somebody that's gonna be interesting to follow. And I, Martin Test Shaves, Martin has made uh, comment reference to him a couple of times that I've caught and uh, and so you two that I just uh, mentioned thank you for subscribing thank you for watching and I hope you find it at least entertaining at least entertaining I like to tell my truck driving stories I like to talk about my routing and the events of the day um, as I see fit. And uh, talk about truck driving, truck driving over the road, living in a truck on the road. And uh, to that end, uh, Cajun Blade made some comments about living out of a suitcase and keeping it simple when he, when he goes on the road. Now, if you watch me for very long, you know that I like to do this facial massage as a form of pre-shave, taking off on dapper shaves, jocks version of the, the people's pre-shave, as he calls it. But it just feels good. You're working the lather in, you're working and getting all those oils and butters and whatever else is in. I just love the scent of this navigator. Okay. You know what, one more dab with the water. There we go. Get it well, extremely well hydrated. So I'm going to do a uh, video, I'm not quite sure when, I want to do it from the truck as opposed to home, but I'm going to do an unpacking of my travel bag, and it's nothing extraordinary. I use a small to medium size fishing tackle bag is what I use to pack up my gear. I take, I took out all the plastic containers and so I just have the open space. And if you've listened to me very long, you know I have my leather seven day roll up. So I take one of those and work through it in 
organized rotational fashion. I take one soap. Well, it's not exactly true. I take one, I take uh, one container soap like this, like this, one container soap. And then I have a partially used, it was brand new at one point, <laughs> a partially used um, um, Bigelow, Seal Bigelow. I was trying to think of the full name, Seal Bigelow, uh, which is a, a take, not a takeoff, it is a relabeled private label um, Paracel Green tube, tube, shaving soap in a tube, uh, a metal tube, like toothpaste. And I use that as a backup. I use it for the first several years of my street razor shaving experience, that's all I use exclusively. So it's kind of taken a back seat for some time now, <laughs> three or four years. Uh, my only claim to shave, uh, my only claim to fame is that I love straight razor shaving. Uh, I got bored driving a truck and just reading books and watching movies and I wanted a hobby. And I didn't know what hobby to take up and so I just typed in the word hobbies into YouTube and saw what come up and once you got past the gardening and the auto repair and uh, uh, cooking and such like here was this guy honing a razor nine years ago Lynn Abrams and so that one thing led to another led to another led to another and here we are so let's start to shave this was finished on a Shapton glass, 30,000. I try to keep the uh, edge, the blade, as parallel to the surface as possible at a shallower, it don't always work, but and at, at different stages too, you know. Oops, balloop. So we'll do that unpacking my travel bag. And so yeah, I find it humorous at least, uh, people talking about all these intricate and extravagant things that they do to set up and make for their conditions for a straight razor shave. I'm just in a public, not public, this is a private restroom, shower room at the uh, Love's Truck Stop. Most of the truck shops will have private shower rooms. Of course, you pay for them one way or another. And so I noticed tonight when I was putting in my reservation and purchasing my shower for this evening, and there were five open showers when I was going through that process, that they charge, Love's Truck Stops charges $18 for a shower. Now, it's free to me, 
because they have a points reward program. Uh, you get so many dollars, uh, depending upon what status you're at, gold, platinum, or diamond. I've always been diamond most of the time, except when it's been rather slow in the halls that I've had. And like I said, those levels are achieved based upon the number of gallons per month that you purchase. Gold, 500 gallons. Platinum, 1,000. And diamond, 1,500. I haven't been platinum in a few months, but that's when we've been slow and I haven't had as many miles or diesel purchases. Uh, but just yesterday, I surpassed 1,500 gallons in my purchases. Uh, so I'm diamond status again for April, as I am now. Uh, for March, based upon my diesel purchases in February. But that's my only claim to fame is I love shaving with a straight razor and all my shaves. Once I discovered it uh, and gave, uh, decided to plunge myself into it, I gave up the cartridge razor like that. And never look back, never look back. Point to new guys, don't look back. Pick it up, use it. It's gonna take you time to get used to it, so why prolong it? A hundred shaves, a thousand shaves, one month, six months, a year, what difference does it make? Make the decision. Uh, it's kind of my opinion on the thing, and it's certainly the model that I followed, and, and uh, never look back. And I have enjoyed every minute of it, and I just regret that it takes 36 hours, 48 hours to get more whiskers on my face, like, <laughs> pick up the razor once again and commence a shaving. Mm. 
another new guy that has recently subscribed to my channel, Sean. Uh, he's doing a good job, and uh, we enjoy why I, we, the mouse, in, the me and the mouse in my pocket, love uh, like watching his videos along with so many. There's only so much time, you know, so you got sometimes you, you know, you, you pick up who you didn't get yesterday, and they get stacked up and stacked up, and you get further behind. And you just go ah. So I've got six seven-day roll-ups that contain my new production and my vintage razors. And then I have two additional, two, yeah, one, I guess, uh, seven-day roll-up, but I have a couple of those inserts doubled up with uh, gold dollars and union razors. I have a I have a total of uh, five straps. Illinois Strop Company, 361, genuine leather. Uh, I think it's Premium Strop Company, uh, Red Latigo. Uh, uh, straight Razor Designs, uh, English Bridal. Uh, Duke City Buffalo, and it's, it's, it's very smooth, very slick, very fast strop. And then uh, my premier uh, is uh, Kaneyama 80,000, three piece, canvas, suede, and then the cordovan. And that's, that's just like the piece, piece de resistance. I carry three in the truck with me. The uh, Illinois, uh, the uh, premium strop company Latigo and the Duke City Buffalo. And they don't take, uh, you know, three don't take up any more room than one. And so I like having those three with me in my travel bag. And I'll show you how I pack them in there. And I have very little trouble with uh, any curvature that develops.
I have quite a number of brushes. Uh, I have four or five in synthetic, uh, three or four in, well, five now in um, bore. Uh, I have two or three, I guess it's two, in horse. And all the rest of them, I have, you know, close to 25 or 30 in various stages of badger. And I've largely retired synthetic bore and uh, horse. There's just not enough time in my life to deal with inferior products. And I don't, you know, okay, I said it. And um, I recently purchased the bore uh, from Sterling Soap Company, 31 millimeter. You've seen me use it recently. Uh, since the first of the year, several times on camera. And uh, it is the king. It is the king uh, of more brushes. Uh, I'd use that any day of the week. I think all in all, I've got about 70, just over 70 uh, straight razors altogether, but I have uh, like 48 of quality, vintage, and uh, first uh, current production. I have approximately 75 to 80 um, soaps, different soaps. Some of them are duplicates, I will admit, and they're like Tabac and Mitchell's Wool Fat and Martin de Condre. Uh, I purchased a year ago uh, the original, the Fougere, the uh, Vetiver, the uh, Rose, and the uh, uh, lemon, legume, I think they call it. <clears throat> and, uh, and then, uh, then I bought, then I bought dupes on all of, all, all five of, you know, so I have two of each, uh, of the, uh, Martin de Condre. If I could only have one soap on a desert island, it'd be Martin de Condre, closely followed by Tabac. Um, uh, that's kind of, I feel that strongly about Tabac. Uh, I have quite a number of soaps from Sterling Soap Company. I've got a few variety of Zingari Man, Barrister and Man, um, uh, Agora Soap Company. A and E. And in my opinion, the best soaps, other than the Martin Acondre, are uh, Sterling Soap Company soaps. Of course, there's some that are better than others, and I'm not just talking about scent. Uh, let me say this too about water. I go all over the country, Canada, US, North, South, East, and West, and I know a lot of people make 
claim about water and the effects it has on soap. Okay, fine. One opinion is as good as another. My opinion and experience has been that water plays a minimal impact on the production of lather, particularly sterling soaps. Well, and this, you know, uh, south, uh, uh, south of Dallas, you know, Texas water on this is Zingari, man. I've got a good lather. Of course, the farther north you go, the better the water is. And uh, so I've not had any. I even filled up all my drinking waters when I was in uh, my drinking water bottles when I was in Great Falls. <laughs> it's good water. Always looking at my pin area to see if I got any. I also know which strokes I'm more susceptible to getting uh, soap in the pin area or on the uh, scales. And that last one or two strokes is one of those areas the way I hold it. I always pick up and lay down my razor using two hands. I want to have as much stability on the razor. As possible. Oh, there was a question brought up in the comments section with one of the new fellows that I've mentioned. He said he, uh, he travels into Canada. He, he's, he's gone for several days or several weeks at a time into Canada for his job. And I believe he said he rides a motorcycle into Canada. And if I read his letter correctly, he, seemed, he said he seems to have more trouble coming back into the United States than going into Canada with straight razors. But I want to relate this little story. Now, let me just start, preface it by saying, coming back into the United States, I have never had a problem. Uh, but I've never declared them either. That is, but, but I use the same logic that the Canadian customs agent told me. Because I was going in and out of Canada all the time with my straight razors. And I know what people think about straight razors. Oh, you can cut somebody's throat with that. Well, you can beat somebody's head in with a hammer too. And I said, uh, I told the guy, we, he got done with all of his questions to me. So we got through the entry process. And I asked him, I said, can I ask you a question? He said, sure, go ahead. And I said, I shave with a straight razor, a traditional straight razor, just like what you see in the movies. And I said, how do you guys regard straight razors? He said, that's a good question. He said, we regard an item or an object, what its obvious intended purpose was. A straight razor is a razor. It's made for shaving. It's not made for cutting throats. <laughs> Which I thought that he's the one that used the hammer illustration as, as, as well. And I said, so I should never have a problem coming into Canada. As an American, and I picked up my leather 
seven day roll up. And I just showed it to him. I didn't unroll it. I didn't pull the razors out. I just showed him my roll up. I said, I've got, this is a seven day roll up. I said, I should never have a problem then coming into Canada with straight razors. He said, no, nope. I always carry seven, no more than seven. He said, but what I, then I said, it you know, dawned on you, one of those questions that just flashes in your head. Would it matter if I had more than seven? He said, no. Now, obviously, if you were on an airplane, this is ground transportation. If you were on an airplane and tried to take it in your uh, carry-on luggage, oh no, they're not gonna let you do that. For the obvious reason, it, it, even though it's a razor, it presents an opportunity to be used as a weapon. Just a beautiful shave I'm having and conversation. I have some other things on my mind I was going to talk about. <clears throat> uh, I listened a good bit of the late afternoon to uh, Owen Schweier on Infowars.com who's Alex Jones' sidekick. Very interesting discussion about surveillance and illegal surveillance and government abuses of surveillance. Uh, I listened the better part of the morning, driving this morning, to our uh, video from yesterday of uh, Dr. Jan Halp Halpner, 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 I believe it is. Very interesting. Uh, she worked in the Trump administration. I don't know the name of the guy who was hosting the program, but I've seen his face before. She was talking about that incompetent, illegal fool that we have, uh, senilic fool that we have in the White House. We have, the United States. Who stole the election. Yeah, I said it. Of course, those same agencies that uh, illegally do surveillance will probably, I'll be in handcuffs before the end of the week. <laughs>
So those are, those are some of the things that were on my mind. One more I'll add to it, and I see where Bill Mars come around to at least my way of thinking and some others about how the um, COVID and vaccine have destroyed more lives than they've helped. I never took it. I knew from the beginning it was all a fraud, both sides of it. I'm a big fan of Steve Bannon. Back when he was at Breitbart and had the morning radio program, I've actually talked to uh, Bannon twice when he had the radio program. Set Milosevic free is how I started one conversation. And I was doing, well, the two times that I talked to Dan, and I said something at the beginning of each conversation that was striking. <laughs> He'll never remember me. He doesn't know who I am. It's been years past. But he started saying in January of, uh, of course, he went through it very methodically, very even handedly, I would say. And, uh, and I've, I've watched him when he went to television. I started watching him from the first program. I listened to him most mornings in the truck on my iPad on Real America Voice app. I say I watch him. I, <laughs> I'm driving a truck. I listen to him. And I told my wife back in January of 2020, I said, we're not taking the vaccine. Uh, and I was reading the recipes on how to make uh, homemade hydroxychloroquine or quinine. And that's really all hydroxychloroquine is. There's a, a form of, high, of quinine. And why is it that Africa had the lowest levels of infection rate? Go figure, you're right? It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out because they have high levels of quinine in their system. I had the good fortune of going to uh, Africa, Dar es Salaam, Tanzania, in uh, September 1984. I was in seminary. I was moved by a speech that a uh, visiting missionary uh, had given in our daily chapel service. And I went and had lunch with him. And we talked and he invited me And he was there at the invitation of the administration of the school. And so this was in the spring of 84. And so 
from that luncheon, conversations ensued, and I got invited on a uh, mission trip to Dar es Salaam, Tanzania for September. And I got permission to be away for 30 days and so forth from the administration. And they thought it was great that I was going to go. And it was a very interesting trip. And I came away with a very definite conclusion that I will never go back to Africa again. Nope. I'm an American and enjoy being in America when compared to, and I, you know, <laughs> yeah, no thank you. But on one hand, you can't help but feel s sorry for and bad of how they have been pillaged and raped. And I don't necessarily mean Tanzania, but other African countries. I think there's a reason why didn't didn't one of the uh, the one that just got taken over with a coup d'état uh, told France to get the hell out. So those are some of the things that have been on my mind today. No, I'm always listening to something informative when I'm in the truck. Rarely do I uh, just listen to music. Uh, but you know, if I'm in a dead zone like I was the other day when I did that in truck video, then yeah, I'll do. I'll listen to some music like Johann Sebastian Bach, Brandenburg Concertos. But I'm not trying to sound hoity-toity by mentioning Bach, because I oftentimes listen to, I say when I'm listening to music, I'm just as apt to turn to Beatles, Beach Boys, or ABBA. Those are, we're talking about pop, pop music, that's 
those are my top three right there. When music was still music. In my opinion. Yeah, this Zingari man has lathered up quite nicely. And uh, I got, I won't say an excess amount, but I got a good amount and it's nice, thick and creamy. Uh, if I add water to it, it will. Not like, it's not so much like the Zingari man that I used last week. Uh, that was a merchant, the merchant. I always take my time. That's why my videos are always in the hour and 10 to hour and 20 minute range. Uh, I don't have a sponsor. I'm not looking for a sponsor. I'm independent. I just, I'm just me. I'm just a guy that drives a truck, have a master's degree in theology. Twenty years full-time work as a pastor. <clears throat> Ask me why I'm driving a truck. I dare you. <laughs> oh, here's something else that I came across today that I should have made more mention of. We are into Easter weekend. Tomorrow is Easter. And this new cult of Satan, uh, LGBTQ XYZ Mafia, is uh, uh, declaring uh, Easter Sunday to be Transgender Day. Now, I call myself a Bible-believing Christian, believe in the virgin birth of Jesus, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. I believe in the Bible, Old and New Testament, 66 books. And who are these idiots that are coming up with 777 books to the Bible? Idiots. They clearly have never read a book or the wrong one. <laughs> but if you're a Bible-believing Christian, uh, that's the next area of attack. Well, it, liberals have attacked the Bible. Modernists have attacked the Bible. Uh since time immemorial. But, uh, yeah, if you believe the Bible, I would encourage you to bone up on 
defending inspiration, transmission, and canonicity. That's just beautiful, absolutely beautiful. You know, when you go over a space several times and it just feels this smooth, inevitably you're gonna find just a little bit of something, but you're running across phantom stubble, a phantom whiskers, because by the time the skin heals and dries out, and the pores close, those whiskers will be drawn in and you won't feel them. But you're gonna have a temptation to chase them with the, with the edge, with the razor. I know, because I do it all the time. I've never had a problem here at uh, Alma Texas, people knocking on the door, trying to barge in, hurry up, get out, hurry up, get out. As I have in other locations like Great Falls, Montana, shame on you. That's why I went over to the Flying J and rather than the Lowe's. Wednesday night coming out of Calgary. And, you know, the purple hairs dominate over there at that loves, if you know what I mean. And I, you know, it just, it boggles my mind. If you don't like trucking or dealing with truck drivers, why do you work at a truck stop? By contrast, this store has always been very good to me. Another store that's always been very good to me is the uh, Love's Truck Stop in Guthrie, Oklahoma, has been very good to me. I'd have to think a little harder about it. I've spent some time recently, a fair amount of time, in uh, Herculeum, Missouri. They were, it's a new truck stop. Uh, but they were good to me the half a dozen times I've been there recently.
Oh, that's wonderful. Most of the news I get comes from reading. Not, uh, I, as I say, I like to watch Bannon in the morning, and Charlie Kirk comes on after him on Real America's Voice. I sometimes listen to him. But most of my news I get by reading and uh, uh, gatewaypundit.com and breitbart.com. There's a couple other sites I visit, but they're so far out there. If I mentioned them, you think I was really crazy. More so than you probably think I am right now. I just wonder, Sean, that uh, those strokes I just did on my neck, pulling up my ear right there, is that what you were calling a J-hook? <clears throat> Maybe you can show me. All right, done with the face shave. And if I do say so myself, uh, Bill, do you see any blood? I don't. little something there maybe earlier in the shave using my leather and I just put my brazers in here uh, as I transport them back and forth from here to the truck truck to here and they'll come out of there when I clean up and do my stropping they'll come out and <clears throat> go into the seven day roll up Well, I haven't had any disturbances yet, but not quite done. I am using my new uh, door lock that I put under the door and that will prevent anybody from coming in. And I just think that's hilarious, generally speaking, with Lowe's because I have had so many encounters where they just barge right through the door without a thought, get caught in the shower with no clothes on, sitting on the toilet, et cetera, et cetera. But they have no regard. They really don't. And I don't know if it's a certain stores that have no regard. I know what my experience has been. And uh, I can tell you that Flying J doesn't do that, especially up in Great Falls, Montana. And the lady that I spoke up uh, spoke to there Wednesday night, she said, I've heard stories about that. I've heard stories. Other drivers tell me that sort of thing all the time. All right, for the head raiser, 
using a um, union razor and on these white handled ones that I have they're either honed up on the uh, Norton translucent or the Dan's true heart which is a white and black modeled uh, coloration you know and my Norton translucent is model colored as well but it is 100% uh, translucent throughout I know I've taken the flashlight and done the thing I'm trying very careful not to hurry myself. I don't want to cut myself on the head. And I know I've been at what, it's an hour and seven minutes, not counting the shower and other, act other restroom activities when I first got in here. So I've been in here a good hour and a half anyway, if not more. One of my truck driving buddies says to me all the time, he said, make sure I don't ever follow you into a shower at a truck stop. You'll be in there for two hours. I said, yeah, you just might be. Hope you're not in a hurry. Well, out of the uh, 10 days or so that I've been on the road, I've had uh, three meals in a truck stop, depending upon what, you know, they were serving. I particularly like the uh, Arby's Smokehouse Brisket Sandwich. Last night I had a uh, Subway ham and cheese took it back to the truck and ate it in the truck. And uh, my wife packed me light. She didn't give me a full 10, 11, 12 days worth of food. And I said, honey, what's this about? You stop loving me? Oh no, I thought I'd let you eat out a little bit. Oh, now it's not the first time she's done that, but it is so rare. <laughs> And as it turns out, I've got one meal left, and it's, uh, you'll love this. It's uh, home-cooked brisket on our home smoker, and uh, sweet baked beans. That's where you throw the brown sugar in with the baked beans. And... And, and as my wife likes to say, what else, what'd you put in that? She said, my big toe. Oh, that's why it's so good.
Now for me, I like to have a fairly straight line coming down alongside the sideburn there. And I like to have a nice crisp straight line right there. I don't like the, that to be an uneven line or a wavy line. I like it to be fairly crisp, fairly straight. Yeah, that's pretty good. There's nothing like a straight razor for close quarter cutting. Now generally I have found that uh, using a straight razor on my head to do uh, shave my head is actually easier than shaving my face. The, the contours are not as stark, especially what would be like around the chin and the nose area. It, they're just all very symmetrical and generally. <laughs> And let me just remind everybody too that you get a nick on the head and there's so much blood that courses through the head that it's, it can be difficult to stop. So take your time, if you ever try shaving your head with a straight razor, just take your time, go slow, you know, and yeah, you need to have a sharp razor, all right. Okay, we're gonna, go with that one more spot and we will be done <sighs> I think I'm going to use a little lather in the back of the neck tonight. I don't always do this, but I, I'm not, I don't have much concern about being rousted. And this just takes, it only takes a couple extra minutes. All right, sometimes I get asked to turn around so you can see me do the back of my neck.
you may have noticed, I don't know if I was squarely in the video frame or not, but when I got to that, when I finished that last stroke, I separated my hands. And I've learned to do that through much pain and agony because one time I crossed over my hands behind my back, behind my head, and I crossed over my hands and I cut my thumb. Uh, so I take very serious care. when I'm not in direct line of sight uh, with my hands. All right, we'll call it quits there. So, oh, one more thing, always one more thing. Uh, Osma Allen Block. And it won't take but a second. Osma. Very little stain, very little irritation, just wonderful. Oops, it slammed the brakes on. That's a fairly new block too, and I'd hate to crack it up. I'm going to take it and set it down over here by the box. So again, not a lot of distance between transference from point A to point B, except that one move. Because there's always a chance you're going to drop something, always a chance you're going to break something. So you try to make your moves as minimal as possible, uh, as safely as possible, because you know, as a truck driver, that's all we're steeped in is safety. You're driving a truck on the road. Safety, safety, safety. 80,000 pounds. Okay, I get it. Uh, and so you got to practice safety. It just has to become second nature to you. And it's hard to do unless somebody points out, don't cross your hands over your head. Don't do this. Don't do that. But those are things that sometimes you just got to learn. All right, I'm done. Thank you for joining me. We'll see you down the road.